Ladies and gentlemen, the never better between I have regrouped. I am back. I am stronger than I have ever been. I am ready for the continuation of the over-analysis of Dark Years. This is part four, and this is where I more or less stop making fun of the bugs, because at this point it's self-evident. And I just stop making fun of the damn thing. So please join me, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, because we're starting now. So here we are. We are a newsman whose name I currently forget and cannot remember and undoubtedly could not pronounce. We are in jolly old London, England. It is the 1950s and we need to warn a doctor about cock, I mean a coup. Let's try to start some investigation. Oh, there's a little ankle high wall over here. Let's just walk over it. And oh wait, turns out this hero, despite being a fantastic journalist who's gonna warn everyone of the horrors of cock, he can't walk back over this ankle high wall. It is simply too much to be asked for. It really is amazing folks that people in Britain in the 1950s were able to cope with the terror of the ankle high walls. My God, how did they recover economically? Fortunately, here in 2015, we can just restart the level. Yeah, the camera's as smooth and as cinematic as ever. Sir, you're not allowed. It's for special guests. Well, you didn't even ask us for our name. I bet he saw us struggling trying to get over the ankle high wall, and he's like, Yeah, no, no, this dude's not going in. I don't care if his name's on the guest list. Hello, sir. Can I ask you some questions? I'm hungry. I'm too weak to answer your questions. Oh, bless this poor man's heart. He must have a voice box. Probably begging on the streets because he couldn't afford the medical bills. Oh, wait. Britain's got socialized medicine. But in all seriousness, does this guy look like he belongs in the 1950s? Unless there's some weird Marty McFly thing going on. It doesn't quite look like he fits into this world. It looks like he belongs in a truck stop or something like that. Not in London in the 1950s. For some odd, peculiar, strange, and bizarre reason, there is a crowbar right beside the guy with the voice box. I guess it belongs to him. Perhaps he's hoping the begging turns out well for him, otherwise he has to go back to breaking and entering. It, w it won't hurt to go to the bar. Somebody might help me there. Whoa, slow down there, man. You seem a little bit too eager to get into the bar. You might have a problem. I mean, just look at this. The man just breaks the laws of physics. It's like he just quantum shifts through the door. Jeez, I don't think I've ever wanted to drink that bad in my life. Yeah, to say the least, whoever designed the interior for this bar has a very eclectic and haphazard taste. I mean, just look at that on the wall there. It's like some sort of pop art. For the 1950s, having a piece like this was a very bold choice. It's like it's a found art piece made out of a mishmash of advertisements and just things a person found in a dumpster. Ah uh, yes, here we have a video arcade. In the 1950s. Whoever owns this place must be an electronic genius or a time traveler. Just with help, I'll take it. Wow, what an interesting new wrinkle this game's added. We're a superhero. We could phase our hand through walls. Well, we never need to worry about a locked door again now, do we? Yes, with our newfound superpowers, I was able to pick up a roll of toilet paper out of this rather classy, and I'm assuming since it's the only bathroom, unisex bathroom. I do apologize for the camera getting all up in the way, but apparently I picked up another object from the ground. This is just the bathroom that just keeps on giving. Perhaps there's some random hole we can find. To go further down, he should be taken away. Wow. Sometimes this game just employs camera angles that are sheer genius. It's very reminiscent, at least to me, of German expressionism. Bold, sharp lines. Complex contrast. It's like something Fritz Lang would have came up with. And also, what our hero just said is very noir of him. To go further down, he should be taken away. Sounds like we want to kill a man to achieve our goals. Oh, no, we don't, unfortunately. Instead, we have to engage in some convoluted adventure gaming. But at the time, I didn't know that. Instead, I just wandered around hoping to find something to interact with. And sure enough, I inevitably did. Now with the food, I'll get a crowbar from the beggar.
Oh no, it appears our hero does not yet fully understand how to use his newfound superpowers. He just removed the dead center of the plate and still left the ring around it. Oh my goodness. He has obvious talent, but he needs to learn to tame it if he is to become a member of, I don't know, the Iranian Justice League? Well, you heard our hero. He said he now has the food to trade for the crowbar. And actually, that's a pretty damn good trade. A plate of food that was laying around on the bar? Someone could have spat on it or put cigarettes out in it, and we gain a fresh new crowbar. We're taking advantage of this poor beggar, aren't we? Oh no, it seems that the game broke under the strength of this powerful scene. An escaped convict feeding a beggar on the streets. The contrast, the sheer human misery was too much for the game to handle. It could not recognize that I was attempting to feed it. The sheer emotion was too much for it. The game crashed and I had to restart it multiple times for it to cope with the magnitude of the misery on display here. So finally the game came to terms with the human condition, and I decided to take a new approach. Instead of feeding the beggar right away, I decided I should talk to the barman. Have you got a match? Yes. Wow, we got a match now. A single match. Why do we need it? Well, obviously it's instant illumination. Perhaps it's a game trying to tell us that the world is a dark place and we need light, no matter how brief, to illuminate our surroundings and get a better perspective on ourselves. Or it could be that we have a box of matches to catch a cockroach with. Yeah, that's what we need to do. I don't know how you're supposed to figure this out. Well, except if you played a bunch of 90s adventure games and are used to just hoping that if you rub an item up against another item, something happens. But there was a few crashes in between me making this revelation and it being recorded. So I was able to stabilize the game after putting the settings on the lowest for everything. I don't think there's too much of a graphical difference, and no, my frame rate did not improve. This game is just a cutting edge beast. While it's exceptionally difficult to tell there, that's me picking up a cockroach with a matchbox. I never knew cockroaches like to hang out in matchboxes, but what I don't know could fill a book. Several billion books. <laughs> Yes, what you witness right there is the case of an experienced adventure gamer employing the old tried but true rub up everything against everything else and hope something happens method of adventure gameplay. Oh, what's this cockroach doing here? Hey, kit, come and get it. And now you can't argue with the results, can you? So if you place the matchbook with the cockroach on the bar, the bartender freaks out. He must have some phobia when it comes to cockroaches. So he calls the guy who's guarding the area we want to get into because we can't over to kill the cockroach which will take well forever so while that's going on let's go ahead and give the meal to the beggar hey man this for you have it thanks a lot god bless you now what do you want to know hey can i borrow that crowbar beside you mm, well no problem just return it soon okay i'll bring it back soon but that will never happen. The newsman will never return the crowbar to the homeless man. So that unclipped little picture of a meal is all he'll ever get for his crowbar. But perhaps we saved him from a life of crime. And perhaps the newsman's about to start one. Because he has to make his way down to the basement. Because it turns out for whatever reasons of architecture, the basement to this bar links up to the hotel that we want to get into. Locked. Something like a crowbar will help me open it. Yes, we've made our way to the basement. But all puzzles in this area are not solved yet. Now, how do I cut off the electricity to get in the hotel? I need to make a connection somehow. I am very unsure what he just said. To get into the author? Are we chasing a writer now? But what I do know is that in order to open this door, we have to use a piece of toilet paper, or rather a whole roll of it, soak it. 
it in some tide we found in the bathroom and put it on this breaker box. And yes, it absolutely has to be tied because that's what it says in the inventory. Now you may be thinking this would be a very stupid way to kill yourself or to burn down this building, but nah, it just opens the door somehow. I like to imagine our hero just used his new superpowers to phase his hand through and to place the moist detergent covered toilet paper roll inside of there. And as you can see right here, the camera is drunk. Just plastered. So classless of it. So classless. Now, the kitchen staff will find out about me. Better change my clothes. So how do we solve this puzzle? Well, we take the intoxicated camera back down to the basement, and eventually we just find some clothes in a room. Now with the clothes on, I'll get in the hotel. My god, this man's a Chippendale. He can pull out of his clothes with the speed of Superman. Although what he's wearing right now is just bizarre. What type of fabric reflects light like that? It's just a strange look. I don't know, 50s fashion was bizarre, I guess. But anyway, we can make it through the kitchen now, because we look like a jackass. Well, I've never seen a hotel this swanky in a video game before. My word, just look at all these people wearing the height of 1950s fashion. Wow. It's like you're almost looking at contemporary times. How little have things changed? Hello, sir. Mr. Fatimi's room number, please. I have something for him. Dude, you need to learn how to hide your powers better. You're just phasing through everything. People are going to notice. I'm sorry, sir. I can't give you his room number. Well, that promptly ends that discussion. Obviously, we could not have bartered with the man or tried to fool him in any way. No, you see, what you need to do here is walk back into the kitchen, grab some random plate of food laying around, and then deliver it back to the gentleman and say it's for the doctor guy you want to see. Oh, wow, look at these grand staircases here. It's so smooth and effortless to navigate them. And also, you're like, whoa, there's multiple floors here. How crazy. Well, what's even crazier is the existence of all these invisible walls everywhere. There's some advanced hotel technology at work here. I mean, it's the 50s, and I never knew they were so advanced. But nevertheless, we now know where the doctor is. I don't know why our hero needed to do such a convoluted adventure game thing, considering he still has superpowers. I mean, look right here. He can stick his head through the wall, and he already knows what the doctor looks like, so... Again, why doesn't he use his superpowers to find this doctor fella? But oh well, here he is, and oh... Yeah... What's going on with this door? I can't quite figure it out. All I can say is that this luxury hotel has some shoddy craftsmanship. I mean, look at that. The frame's popping out. Oh, man, that's not up to code at all. And you want to know what else is pretty crazy? I think this is the first and perhaps the only time in this game that a door is actually animated and opens. I know. Cutting edge technology right here, folks. No wonder my frame rate dropped so much. Hi, Mr. Fatimi. Sorry to take your time. Yes, we're all very sorry that you're taking up our time. And also looking at these two gentlemen right here, it's like they're at the first annual Who Shot the Couch competition. But hey, let's be historical now. You see this ill-dressed man on the left? He was apparently a very famous Iranian politician. There's even a Wikipedia page about him. He advocated for the nationalization of Iranian oil reserves which naturally led to some conflict with the British and then turned the Americans. But hey, that's me knowing history. None of this game goes into that. For all you know, this guy's just a weird dude wearing a strange tweed. Is that a tweed? I don't know. Again, it looks like he shot a couch and skinned it. Jackets. I'm assuming this game thinks you're current on all your Iranian history, which, to be honest with you, it's pretty fascinating stuff, so... Yeah, let's just listen to this delightful conversation. Hey, what have you done to yourself? What's the matter? Wow, it all seems like this guy's responded to a completely different conversation. After all, all our hero said was, hello. I don't know, maybe they forgot to translate a few lines. I got involved in the murder of an employee in the British embassy. When I found a clue, the English police force arrested me and put me in the jail. Oh, so that's what's been going on in this game. I had no idea. I know the narrative's so complicated and complex it's just going right over my head. Anyway, 
I escaped from there, and by the cellar of the barn next to the hotel, I got here. Now I'll do whatever you order. Wait, I, I thought this guy was here to warn this guy about the cock, but now he's gonna do whatever he or- Oh my goodness. I hope these gentlemen use a safe word. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the best you can do is to get a fake ID and go to your one in disguise with tomorrow evening's flight. Um, well, okay, I guess. But what's going on exactly? Like, for real, we were here to warn this guy about a coup, and now we're gonna run away to Iran because of, well, we did escape from the police, but all this is very murky. I still don't fully understand why the police even care about us. Why were we arrested? Yeah, sure, we were at the scene of an exploding house, but that doesn't mean anything. The house blew up on its own. I just... I don't quite understand it. But again, with such a rich and complex narrative, I'm just revealing how much of a simpleton I am, I suppose. I know a friend who can help you with the passport. Good luck, Ami. Thank you, Doctor. Have to see you soon. I just really like how this game abruptly ends all conversations like that. So I suppose we warned the guy about the coup, probably with our psychic powers, or maybe our hero forgot in all the excitement and talk about fake IDs and fleeing the country. So at least now we got some direction in this game. We have to go to some friend of this guy, who this guy didn't bother to name or tell us where to go, and get a fake ID from him. So how are we supposed to know where to go or who to go to? But we'll worry about all of this in the future, and in the next part of my over-analysis of Dark Years. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I hope you have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening.